We're going to look at reducing stress in a very short period of time using resonant frequency breathing. Anxiety is a response to threat, whether perceived or real. This is a scientific definition between relationship between stress and anxiety. Let's look at events associated with anxiety. Usually it starts with a trigger. A trigger from, could be from the past, present, or the future. A past could be trauma from the past. Uh, present could be, uh, let's say for example, you're driving down a freeway and all of a sudden somebody cuts you off. Or future, thinking about the exam that may be happening in the next couple of days. All these events or thought process can lead to arousal in your sympathetic nervous system, which is what we call a flight or fight response. When you have a flight or fight response, what happens is that your heart rate increases, you're, you're going to breathe faster, and also tightens up your uh, muscles. So that when the muscle gets tightened up, when you're trying to breathe, you cannot access the diaphragm that easily. So therefore, you go to chest breathing. Chest breathing usually lowers the carbon dioxide level down. When you lower the carbon dioxide level down, you have less nitric oxide production. Less nitric oxide production means that you actually have going to have less blood flow going to the brain, and that's been shown in studies. You're actually going to have like 35% less, um, less uh, blood flow to the brain if you have low carbon dioxide. The low carbon dioxide also causes the hemoglobin to bind to the oxygen uh, tighter. Therefore, less oxygen is going to be available to the brain cells as well. Now, you can imagine if you have less oxygen to the brain, it actually can cause you more anxiety because you may not be able to think properly, clearly. So therefore, you have further anxiety from that. Also, further anxiety from your heart rate going up because you're going to feel like your heart is pounding away. And also, you're, trying to, you're, you're breathing faster as well. So all those can lead to more anxiety. So one way to try to interrupt the anxiety cycle is actually try to use resonant frequency breathing by slowing down the breathing and also the heart rate. We need to look at a couple of concepts. One is heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is the time interval between the beats and it's variable. Thus, it is called heart rate variability. The other one is the resonant frequency breathing. The resonant frequency breathing is the breathing rate at which the uh, heart rate goes up as you inhale and heart rate comes down as you exhale. In this example, the bottom graph is the, uh, the breathing. Uh, you can see there's six breaths a minute, roughly. And as you see, there's, with, with each inhalation, the beat-to-beat -beat heart rate goes up. And with exhalation, the beat-to-beat -beat heart rate comes down. So you can see the pattern. They're very similar between the top and the bottom. What is the scientific basis for using heart rate variability and resonant frequency uh, breathing to reduce anxiety? In this 2017 study shows that by using heart rate variability with resonant frequency breathing, uh, you can reduce the, uh, uh, the stress level. Uh, 2017 study, this is a meta-analysis study. Uh, meta-analysis study is a large group of, they, they took a large group of existing studies that was done already and they looked at they, they look at all the data point and they came to the conclusion that uh, uh, heart rate variability by feedback uh, reduces the uh, self-reported stress and anxiety. In this latest 2021 studies, uh, which is a systematic review, which is really a very high, highly valued study, um, they looked at 29 studies and uh, came to the conclusion that by heart rate variability by feedbacks uh, has a positive uh, effect and it helps to reduce uh, anxiety, stress, and also depression as well. All the data collected is represented on this graph. Uh, the bottom row representing the carbon dioxide level and the uh, uh, breed, rate of breathing. Uh, the middle row representing the heart rate variability or beat to beat heart rate and the top row representing the autonomic uh, regulation between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, this information is extracted from the second row uh, through what they call a fast Fourier transformation and it's also known as a power spectral. Uh, there's a lot of information on the internet if you so want to look into it further. Um, the 
the, the green zone in the middle is influenced by, uh, by the uh, green zone is considered what they call a low frequency zone. Uh, it's influenced by the high frequency and very low frequency, which is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Let's look at a case study we did uh, where we applied a mental stress on the system. The data collected is shown on the graph. Uh, the bottom row indicates that there is uh, 14 breaths a minute and the breath is very irregular, uh, but the carbon dioxide level is pretty well maintained at about 35 millimeter mercury. The uh, middle row indicating the beat to beat heart rate trending upward but does come down indicating stress resiliency. Um, and you'll see the amplitude being, uh, height difference being about between the peak and the bottom part of the graph, it's about uh, uh, 10. And the uh, sympathetic arm and the parasympathetic arm is actually fairly active and the green zone is pretty flat in the middle. Uh, the same case we're looking at, uh, we did a resonant frequency breathing. Uh, we'll notice on the bottom part of the graph, the, the breathing uh, pattern is fairly consistent, uh, pretty close to 35 millimeter mercury and the breath rate is about five and a half, six uh, per minute. If you look at the uh, beat to beat heart rate, uh, they're pretty consistent in terms of, uh, of the wavelets or the, uh, or the, the wave pattern. Uh, and you also notice that the, um, the amplitude is about 17. Um, and if you go to the top part of the graph, we can see there's a peak in the green zone where both the uh, um, there's a sympathetic and a parasympathetic arm um, is actually pretty toned down there. Some of you asked me, how do you do resonant frequency breathing practically? Uh, first is that you need to have a quiet place. Uh, second is that you may want to get an earplug to hear your breathing uh, more clearly. Um, you have to practice on trying to go to the diaphragm because what happens if you go to chest, you're going to lower your CO2 level and Lowering your CO2 level will make uh, you to have less accessible to your oxygen in your brain. And as a result of that, you may also, that may itself create some anxiety for you. Um, how do you get to diaphragm breathing? Uh, there's a couple of ways you can practice that. Uh, one is that you can lie on a supine position on your back and you can feel one with your hand on your chest and one on your diaphragm. Or you can alternatively, you can get some uh, ankle weight that you can place across the uh, on the top between the breastbone and one across on the diaphragm so you can see the rise and the fall. The awareness of the breath is really critical in terms of being able to tell when you are in diaphragm, when you are in chest because when you are when you have an anxiety moment you need to go to diaphragm because it'll help to sort of bring everything together for you because what happens is that then you have more accessible oxygen that is available to your brain. Um, and then you need to get uh, uh, what we consider a pacing app. Uh, there's a couple of them that's available. One is, uh, I think it's called, uh, one is the IBF. Um, you can look into the internet for that. And then the other one is called a pacer, I believe. Uh, you can use those app and I would start them at about, you know, if you're not comfortable with the slow breath, start at about 12 breaths a minute, and then you work your way into 10, eight, and six. Usually at a range between about, you know, five and a half to seven would be where most people will have the resonant frequency breathing. I hope this helps. Uh, I will probably have an opportunity in the future to actually, to show practically how you would get to resonant frequency breathing. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel and I do thank you for watching and if you have already subscribed, I do thank you for your support.